All right. So here we are talking about SEO, search engine optimization, and thinking about how it is so cold and detached and robotic. And if that sounds like something that you've thought about before, you're going to want to stay tuned because I have Michaela here and she's going to talk to us about how we can add a little personality to our SEO and use it to optimize video, to optimize your website and to really show up as your best self online so that you can actually get to the eyes you need to get to. Michaela, I'm going to get you to hop in here, tell people a little bit about yourself, why this topic is important to you and why it ought to be important to them. So SEO is like a huge thing for me. Um, and I found it's been like just increasingly more important as I've owned a business and like as I've worked for it like you start a service and you're like this is important and then you you really get into it and you're like wow this is this is really important <laughs> um but you know I've had three three kids over the course of having my business and the ability like having SEO as my my main marketing method has extremely helped when I have to take off time for like you know the entire household gets a stomach bug or um you know I give birth <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it gives me those <laughs> it gives me those times that I don't have to worry about, you know, oh my God, um, do I still have traffic coming in? Do I still have people seeing my content? Um, what am I gonna do when I can't post on Instagram for two weeks or three weeks? Like, am I gonna lose that that traction that I've had, but then I have SEO and it's just it's just keeping it going. It just oh my goodness. keeps it up with it. And so I just it just it it's so important. <laughs> for those moments. Um, I, I can't even, honestly, Michaela, I've never had, I've spoken to, I'm, I'm a copywriter at heart. That's where I started. And I've spoken to mm -hmm. many SEO experts. Now I infuse my copywriting with SEO, but I would not consider myself an SEO expert, right? Because this is what you do. This is your, mm -hmm. your entire business is SEO. I have never heard someone say, on the event that I get give birth, <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the event that I give birth, people will still see the content that I've put out into the world. Now I know that's a bit of a dramatic like situation, but but truly, you go on vacation, somebody gets sick, you just freaking don't feel like it. You need to unplug for a while. SEO yeah, I mean, saves your life almost literally, like. Yeah, it does. Cause I mean, how many times have you gotten up with your kids in the middle of the night? And you, like, that's not in your game plan. You weren't like, man, I've got a great, you know, I've got all this stuff I have to do tomorrow, but your kids come first. Like if your two year old is, I need mommy. All right. I got you, girl. I'm there for you. If that means we're going to stay up till 3am watching Frozen because you have a monster on your wall, then we're going to stay up till 3am watching Frozen. And then we're going to go back to sleep and you can sleep till 10 and I'll be very exhausted in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, and then you may not want to do the real or the live or the whatever, yeah, and it's no, okay. It's... And it's okay because you've worked that into your strategy. You've worked into that is yo, love it. That's the goal. Like we have, I have the content plan. We have when it's gonna go live. I know that I have this content ready to be published. It's going to be indexed by Google. I have content that is already performing well on Google and bringing people to my site. So I'm not, I'm not stressed. That's I cute. learned a long time ago that Instagram was not for me. <laughs> you know, but I think right as soon as I got on Instagram is when they started introducing reels and I was like, Oh, well, darn it. I'm a writer. I am not. This right here is the most for video. Um, not big on video, but I can write all day long. So, you know, play to your strengths. Yeah. Yeah. Play absolutely. Play what you can do. And that's what's really important, right? Like to make sure that you're leaning into what feels aligned to you. And no matter what, I mean, this is coming from from my end, like your your marketing strategy, people will tell you, you need videos, you need to do this, you need to, there is no need. You, what you ought to do is play to your strengths mm -hmm. and optimize what's working for you and for your clients so that you can find that sweet spot where you're consistently showing up and generating leads really important and one of those ways one of the one of the uh strands to the braid that is showing up mm -hmm. for your business is seo because that way if there happens to be a time when you do need to step back your seo is working for you already it is and i mean there's 
of course there's different levels of SEO. So, you know, you have your technical SEO, you have your content SEO, and then you have your off, off page SEO, you know, it's other places on the internet that affect how, how your content is performing and how your website's performing. And I don't, I know technical SEO, but I don't do it personally. Um, I know my website's optimized and that's, that's about as much as I go. And I do content SEO. And the reason I do it like that is because, you know, we have a blog post and it's SEO optimized. So Google's finding it. I'm getting traffic from Google. But after this week long of, you know, dealing with kids sick or say we started school or I'm getting back from vacation, I have content on my website. So if I do need an Instagram post, you know, I had this blog post scheduled and posted and I can just go back to that blog post and pull back from it. I can repurpose it. Repurposing is so important. And if you're repurposing from an already optimized source, then you don't need to you don't need to think through it again. You don't need to pick it apart and, and rehash it. But like I said at the beginning, there's there's a huge stigma against search engine optimization. And I've actually written about this in the past. A few years ago, I was writing about how, you know, you, you think SEO and you really think, OK, so I'm writing for a robot because search engine optimization, you're you're optimizing your piece of content so that a search engine can find it. But there's so much more to it and there's so much richness that can be added to it so that it doesn't feel cold. Can you tell me a little yeah. bit more about that, about adding personality into it? So, yeah, um, what's crazy is I was thinking about this the other day. Um, I think about it every day, but uh, at the base of it all, it's very simple, but it's so complicated. You think, like, when you think SEO, you're thinking all these jargon words. You're like, what the heck is this? What the heck is that? Um, how can I even write like that? Like, wh who am I trying to please? You, and you're trying like I need to put this keyword here I need to put this keyword there but it, it boils down to quality content mm -hmm. quality content for your audience so you know keep in mind SEO best practices keep keep it there we need those but put your personality on it because it's it's not going to help you if you're ranking you know for your keyword and it's you know number one on Google but it's showing up to the wrong, wrong people because search is catered to us. Ultimately, you know, you bring in traffic from Google, but everybody's search results are going to differ just a little bit. And because it's Google's, you know, bringing stuff that's most relevant to you based on your history, based on what you're searching, you know, it even gives you search suggestions. So you want to make sure that you're showing up to the right people, not just the right keyword, but the right people and and that's where the personality comes in you know i'm not writing for 50 year old males even though i'm with seo and that's a huge thing like agencies for seo that that's that's huge and that is not the people i'm writing for so i have to keep that in mind when i'm writing my blog post and that means you know every now and i'm be like yeah mama uh this is what you need to do and that's fine or like in my personal opinion this sucks <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And that's and I think that's really important. So I, I'm hearing two different things. I'm hearing that search engines like Google have mm -hmm. have an algorithm for you based on your history, based on your interactions with it. And a lot of people don't remember that. We think algorithm and we think social media, right? We think, oh, the Facebook algorithm or whatever. But does too. Google has an algorithm based just for you and all of those things come into play. And so the second part of that is what you said, writing for people, remembering who you're writing for. So while you're writing for a search engine because you want it to pick out key things, you're also writing for people. So when they're, what, what words are they using? Understanding who your ideal, your, your, um, what, did, what was the word that I heard I attended a big event this last week um, and they used right fit audience. What does your right fit audience search for when they're on mm -hmm. Google? Right? Like you need to think about that. You need to really get into their minds, but then you also need to speak like yourself because if they click on something because it popped up, because you did your work, you aligned it with your right fit audience, you aligned it with the search engine, and then it sounds choppy and robotic, they're not going to read through. So wh what was the point in the first place? Yeah, and they're not. Then uh, most readers are going to read about three blog posts before they buy. Mm -hmm. If you can't even get them to go to the second, how are you going to get them to go to the third? They're not making it through the first. Yeah, that's that's what we're seeing most is you, you go in there and you're like, oh, this this title really caught my eye because it's been optimized. Mm -hmm. It's on the top of my list, whatever. 
You start reading and you're like, what is this? Why would this, why would they bother? Why would they bother even scanning through mm -hmm. your, their bounce rate is what? Three, three seconds, something like that. They go in there like, Oh no, that doesn't work. They're off. I said, you can, you can hear, you can understand a lot by looking at your analytics of what is working and what is not working because we all have that blog post. If we have a blog that, you know, we woke up one morning and we're like, I got to write about this. And you put a little bit more sass or a little bit more personality into it. Cause yeah. you, you're like, I want to talk about it, but I'm just, I'm not fully feeling this right now. And you'll notice that even if I might get a little bit less traffic, people are staying longer. That's it. They're reading it. They're clicking through more often. They're getting to the bottom where, you know, you've worked hard to put your call to action or your offer or your lead magnet. And we can work with that. Yes. This past week, I removed, or actually it was this past month, I removed a blog post from my website that was getting 30,000 people each year. Go Just on. Just visiting it. <laughs> I like the way the story starts. I'm already here. <laughs> <laughs> and... The problem was, so I put this on my, on my website at the very beginning of, you know, kind of like my journey. And I, at the time it was relevant because I used to offer Pinterest services, but I wasn't converting for Pinterest. It was converting for an affiliate program. They shut down the affiliate program not too long ago. So it ultimately stopped bringing me in, bringing any money in. It wasn't bringing a lot in to begin with. Yeah. It was just bringing traffic. They weren't converting to my lead magnet. It was very formal, you know, it was not something I, I typically talk about anymore. So it, it really had no space for my, on my website. It had no space for my audience. It did not fit them. So I took it off. And because I took it off, my other stuff, because I still have that SEO content coming out and stuff that actually speaks to my audience, my other stuff started performing better because I took off the stuff that doesn't relate to my audience. And so even though, I have 30,000 less, like I'm going to expect 30,000 less people to hit my, go to my website this year, this upcoming year. I will probably have more conversions for my lead mag magnet. My lead magnet conversion, my pop-up went up by 10% over the past month Dude. because the people seeing it are the people who actually want to do it. Not just people who are on my website to get, because they found me on, on Google. Like they're people who found me on Google and have interest in SEO. They were they were the, the right fit. They weren't just yeah, they were my that, right fit. That's it. That's it. I love that. And and what what I refer to this as in when it comes to like your strategy and putting things out there when we're doing your content audit is weeding. We're weeding your content. We're weeding mm -hmm. how you're showing up. Because just like in your garden, if if you leave if I here's a great example actually. So I grow lots of tomatoes. I have tomatoes coming out of my ears. Um, <laughs> like they're all over the place, but I also grow morning glories, but the morning glories at, are at the front of the house. The tomatoes are at the back. Mm -hmm. Now, every once in a while, the seeds spread and I get a morning glory growing in my garden. Is it beautiful? Yes, it's beautiful. Just like I'm sure that your, your affiliate blog was lovely, but the problem is if I leave it there, it will choke out my tomatoes. It will wrap around them and they will be no more. 100%. You'll have pretty flowers, but my tomatoes will die. I will have no tomatoes to eat. This is a problem. So I need to weed that out. It is now a weed. It's beautiful in the front, not beautiful right here. <laughs> so I have to take that out in order for my other things to, to thrive. And that's what we're doing with your content. That's what we're doing when we're looking at the analytics and the SEO, when we're placing mm -hmm. this in strategically to make sure that it all thrives where it's meant to thrive that you're not having any suckers, so to speak. You do that with tomato plants too, as you take the suckers off, they grow. Yeah. <laughs> right, right? So <laughs> gardening, I'm telling you, gardening and marketing are like married. <laughs> they really, they really are. <laughs> they really <laughs> are. So yes, that's what I'm hearing you saying. It's just, it's all about weeding out the stuff that's not working and really using the stuff that is in a way that makes sense. So that said, we talk about how you're doing that on your back end, but what about like the prevalence of visiting sites that are great? Like they're, they're, they're what on page one of Google. Awesome. That's what we want, right? Everybody wants to be on page one of Google, mm -hmm. but you click on it and it's not working. Like you're like, 
what <laughs> what even is happening here how do how do you as an expert um go in there and and help these companies fix what's not working so a lot of what i do is you know is, is content wise and you see a lot of stuff that people are just trying to overcomplicate. So it, it's just not, your audience can't comprehend it. You're trying to talk to another expert. And people, if you're the expert, they're coming to you for you to put it in a way that they understand. And, you know, SEO is specifically one of those. It's very complicated. But, I mean, there's other things, too. I mean, even motherhood. When people are explaining gentle parenting or um, sleep, because there are a lot of sleep consultants out there, it can get a little bit too too complicated. And we're like, well, we came here to find a find a solution for our problem, but I feel more confused. Mm-hmm. Or they put too much in their content for us to pull what we need. Like it's not it's not necessarily complicated, but we can't find our answer anymore because. Or have you ever gone to a recipe uh, um, to find a food recipe on Pinterest? And you click through, you're on the website, they have this huge rundown, and then the recipe's at the bottom. Or it's somewhere in the middle, and you can't quite find it anymore. Mm-hmm. And, you've, and you like, now know all know about how, how they were brought up in the old country, and how, and how they're, yeah, yeah, you've got their whole life story, yeah. and you're like, yeah, but I just wanted cabbage rolls, okay? <laughs> you're so, yeah, and they're doing cabbage. <laughs> they're doing this because they feel like so one they, typically their their revenue is from ads and the longer their content the more likely somebody's going to read through it and find out but they've been told that the more content they have the better it is for SEO or they need to do it a certain way which is is, is simply not true um, of course there's a way to help but one of my clients highest converting blog post is around 570 words long that, that's not a lot. That is, I believe, a two to three minute read. If that. Um, yeah, like if that, it's very simple. It's straight to the point. It tells you pretty much it, tell, it answers the problem in the first paragraph. And mm-hmm. last year she made 12 grand from it. Nice. I like that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, you don't need a 3,000 word blog post. You don't need to put your recipe at the bottom. Give your audience what they need and they're going to trust you. They're going to trust you even further and they're going to be able to understand and actually be able to read. And I mean, there's a whole bunch more issues, you know, like actually making sure your content is readable, like your text size is accurate. You don't want to make it too small. You don't want to make it, um, it too, like the contrast is too close together where you can't physic- like actually see it. Yeah, and there's there's a few different things like that. Like you want to make sure you're putting your all all image um, descriptions. You might want to make your content accessible, but it's the actual what's contained in the content as well. Be smart about it. And so this is the yeah, integration be between creating content like blogs. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to stick with blogs here because I think that's a really great place to kind of hunker down on understanding how SEO works within the context of your of your website. Um, so you're, you're creating content in blog form and you want to make sure that it's search engine optimized. But then you mm-hmm. also, and this is where I I'm I will say this until I'm blue in the face, you also want to copyright it. And that's where we're talking about being concise, being clear, okay. having a call to action and just taking people on the journey that they need so that they can at the end be like, that's the one. And not none, no fluff. It's real, I, I have the book here somewhere. It's um, White and Strunk's, uh, uh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Rules of rules of something, some writing rule book. Mm-hmm. I have it here. I should be able to access it. I'll bet you it's behind me. Ha. William Strunk and E.B. White, The Elements of Style. Rule number 17, I will tell you because I know it by heart, is omit needless words. That's it. <laughs> You it is it. very accurate. It's very accurate. I mean, you, a lot of a lot of it comes from you know. All right, so you go to this website, you go to this SEO website, and they're like, you need to do this, 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 and this to get your web your your content ranking for your blog post to rank. Honestly, they should be telling you, don't do this, right? Because they're just they're telling you the best practices, which they've seen perform well, which is a good bet. It's a good bet, but we have to look at the different resources that we have available and that they have available. Mm-hmm. 
that you are likely getting information from a huge place. Like you're getting it from Moz, SEM Rush, um, or just a huge marketing website. They have a lot more and a lot different. Their resources are going to look very different than us. We don't have the benefit of spending six hours because a 3000 word blog post for it to be done properly is going to take you a long time. Like 3000 words is a lot. It is. And that's I, I never suggest for writing us. that much. <laughs> no, but if you go and you look up the like blogging statistics, they're going to say um, 3000, 3000 words gets the most backlinks, which is great for off page SEO. If you're working off page SEO, you're going to be attracted to that. Oh, backlinks. That's nice. Um, and you know, other people are going to be finding my content, but nobody's actually like, people are going to link back to it, but nobody's going to read it. You're, it's not going to be your best converting blog post. This is really that's important. what we need to focus on is those best converting. We need best converting. We don't need backlinks can come later. We can actually work on those, but we need that conversion. We need to see our ROI. They have budget. They have, you know, they're, they're willing to spend a couple thousand a month. Um, working on backlinking and, and putting somebody paying somebody to spend six hours on a blog post and they've well, been doing it for years. of their marketing budget right and I think this yeah. is a really key part of what people need to understand when they're coming into the marketing world when they're investing in their and when I say investing I mean yes money but also time and energy because it all it all adds up so it's really important to understand that you're getting the right information for you that it's personalized to where mm -hmm. you are in your business based on your resources. And that's your business. That's your resources in business and in life. Because remember that we still need to live our lives as well. So it's important yeah. that you're getting the right information customized to you. Now, we don't have very much time, Michaela, and we could probably continue talking. Especially, <laughs> talking about this I'm all gonna day. Ask, right? I feel like we could just keep going and, and it would and it wouldn't stop being of utmost value mm -hmm. to everyone here participating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you one more question to get, see if we can get an overview of a topic that I think will be really interesting to, to our listeners. And that is the SEO tied with um, video, because we are hearing this constantly that shorts and even long videos on YouTube, longer videos, um, they're really getting a lot of traction. People are going to see it. Um, and of course we need to tie SEO to that. Um, mm -hmm. I've even heard um, and done the research for, but I like to hear it from you as well, is having a video attached to your blog that is associated is really beneficial. Can you tell me a little bit about that before we close off today? So it can definitely be helpful. Um, but there is a, there's an asterisk. There's like a, <laughs> not a correlation. It's a correlation, but not a correlation, not causation. Yes, correlation, not causation. I love that sentence. Correlation. I use that on my day-to-day, -day, by the way. I am the geek who uses that sentence all the time with my husband, who's a science nerd. I'm a psych nerd. Mm -hmm. So I will say, okay, so this happened and then this happened. Now, correlation, not causation, but, and that's how we start a conversation. Just yeah, letting so everybody know actually, I'm that geek. <laughs> so what we can actually see from this is not that Google is, not that Google is looking at it and being like, oh, she's got a video. Let's Let's rank this higher. It's more of the people who are, you know, your content is ranking and, you know, your Google, just like anywhere else, test it. You're going to push a little bit higher, see who's going to go on to it and see what they're doing on it hmm. because they can read what they want, but they want to see what users see. They want to see how they're going to behave. So if people are going on it and bouncing off. They don't want to push it anymore. It's not they don't, like it's not doing what they needed to do. But if you have a YouTube video and it's really good and it's placed just right. Even if, if it's 30 seconds or 30 minutes in your blog post and it's embedded. So, you know, they're not going off of your website to listen or to watch. And they sit on your website for 20 minutes, for an extra minute. You know, that bounce rate just, that mm. they're staying on their website, you're longer. Right. And so, so your rankings are going to go higher. It's just like if you space out your content better and for readability, like, they're going to scroll further on your page. So you're getting that user action. Ooh, that's tricky business. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's sneaky. That's why there's a correlation, but not a causation because it's not actually, it's not necessarily that you put a YouTube video on there. It's that they stayed longer. Yeah. 
That's and that they're still interacting on your website. I like that answer. Thank you, Michaela, so much for that answer. That, <laughs> that's, that's the people centered. So for for anybody interested, like you definitely want to dive in with Michaela because this this is the people centered part of SEO. This is where you're taking SEO, which is very analytic, very much like data driven. Make sure that you're adding up mm -hmm. algorithm, all that jazz that everybody cringes, like even myself, like I do marketing and I still go, Ugh, yes, I know. But but there's a people element that is a really important part to acknowledge and incorporate into all of the strategy that you do around your content and your SEO. So now, Michaela, I'm going to ask you to give your last two cents, your cherry on top. Um, and then, of course, tell people where they can connect with you, because that's a really important part. <laughs> so I guess I'll close it by um, saying don't cave in to all the jargon you see online. Um, do your best. Follow the best practices, but make sure you put yourself in there. Otherwise, you know, it's all it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. But you can um, find me on Instagram at kamamama.co i'm sure that'll be in the link as well and then if you want to reach out to me directly um and just have a chat you can find me at the kamamamaco.com forward slash discovery call that will also be in the show notes but it was great to talk to you today <laughs> it's That's, so much fun oh my goodness i can't even I, I can't even tell you i could we could just we could keep going because there's so much tied in to how you're marketing your business, how you're marketing yourself while you're marketing your business mm -hmm. and the data and analytics that are used to support that, to push that forward. And I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have another conversation and a few collaborations moving forward that exemplify the how to the what should we look for? Um, I think that will be really interesting. And that way people can come and join us um, over on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. And they can dive in because you're going to see more of this sort of thing coming from Michaela and myself. Um, how am I going to do this? Sir, this all sounds great. I'm, but how? Join us. We're going to be creating a lot more around this. Um, follow us. Subscribe. All the fun stuff. And with that, I'm going to ask everybody to have a great rest of the day. Thank you again, Michaela, for joining me.